Hi, welcome to this tutorial on hypothesis testing for the proportion P from a binomial distribution. Now, first of all, what is a hypothesis test? Well, essentially, it's being able to make a decision whether a particular model is likely to have happened or not happened, whether it's likely to be true or false. Now, the best way I can illustrate this is to look at a particular example. And what I've got here is a six-sided die is thrown 30 times and the number of sixes scored is recorded. And this is clearly a binomial model. We've got a finite number of trials and the probability of getting a six is always going to remain constant and independent. So let's start by defining a random variable x. So let x be the random variable number of sixes scored in 30 throws, where x is distributed binomially, 30 trials, and the probability of getting a 6, p, is written here. Now you might be thinking that I should have written p as being 1 sixth. Well, that's on the assumption that the die were fair. Well, if I'm going to make that assumption that the die is fair, we call that the null hypothesis, whatever assumption that we make. So the symbol for the null hypothesis is often written with H and a little subscript zero. Some people pronounce it HO though, so be prepared for that. So the null hypothesis is going to be that the die is fair and that would mean that P would be one sixth. And if that were the case, then we could work out from that what the expected number of sixes would be, okay, if we threw this. Well, the expected number would be, for a binomial, n times p. And in this case, it would be 30 times 1 sixth, or 1 sixth of 30. Let's just write that. We're going to have 1 sixth of 30, which amounts to 5. So we'd expect to get 5 sixes if the die were fair when we threw it 30 times. We can illustrate that on a number line like this, which illustrates the number of times we would get a 6 in 30 throws. And I've written in red here the expected number, 5. Now, common experience ought to tell you that if you threw a die 30 times, and assuming it was fair, you're not always going to get five sixes. It's going to vary. It's going to fluctuate around this area. I doubt whether you would get 30 sixes. I haven't had room to do it on this number line. Okay. I would think it would be extremely unlikely to happen. On the other hand, you might be down here and get no sixes. And if the die is fair, I wonder if that would be very likely to happen. I mean, if you got no sixes and you're playing a game, for instance, where you had to throw a six to start and you threw it 30 times didn't get a six, I'm sure you'd most probably say, oh, this is unfair. I'm never getting a six. So there comes a point when we need to decide that things might not be as expected that the die in this particular example is not fair. So if I threw, for instance, very few sixes going down in this direction, I would think that the probability P has possibly been reduced from one sixth. Okay? And we call this the alternative hypothesis to the die being fair, and it's written with H and a subscript 1, the alternative hypothesis. Whereas if I started to throw quite a few sixes, okay, rather than the expected number of fives, then I would most probably suspect that the probability of throwing a six is now increased. P is more than one sixth. So I would have an alternative hypothesis to the null hypothesis, H1, being that the proportion P has actually increased. Now, when we do hypothesis testing, we're going to be dealing with either 
this type of situation where we're less than the expected result or this situation where we're more than the expected result. And these are called one-tailed tests. Just write that in for you. One-tailed tests. This particular situation is in the lower tail and this one is in the upper tail. Now suppose we wanted to make a decision whether the die was biased. Suppose we scored, say, only one six in 30 throws. We might think the die was biased then. So we would call this our observed value, and observed values are normally written with a small letter. So let's imagine that our observed value x is in the lower tail. Just write that in here. x is in the lower tail. Now, if we scored, say, 1, 6, we might think that was unlikely. Well, we need a measure of that kind of unlikeliness. And so what we do is we work out the probability of getting less than or equal to the particular observed value. So if we work out the probability that x is less than or equal to the observed value, given that we're assuming that the die were fair, that HO is true, in other words, that x, the number of sixes thrown, is binomially distributed, 30 trials, but the probability of success is 1 sixth, then if this particular probability becomes very small, unlikely to happen, yet it has happened, then we're going to suspect that the die is biased. And this particular probability is often given the symbol alpha. And alpha is called the significance level of the test. So I'll just write that in. Alpha equals the significance level of the test. Significance level. Okay, now that particular value in most questions is 5% or as a decimal 0.05. Although in some questions you'll see it go down as low as say 1%. So we set a kind of limit to where we are going to reject the null hypothesis. So we would reject HO if the probability of getting less than or equal to our observed value, it could be 1, it could be 0, given that the null hypothesis is true, falls below a certain percentage. And the same is true for upper tail values. I mean, if we found that we threw a lot of 6s, that our observed value x was say 9, 10 or whatever, let's have a look at what happens in the upper tail. So if x is um, in the upper tail, all right, we would reject HO if the following was true. That is that the probability that we get the number of sixes being more than or equal to this time, our observed value, given that the null hypothesis was true, that in this case would be 30, 1, 6. Okay. If we find that this probability is less than or equal to our significance level alpha, then we would reject HO. Okay, so this brings us to the end of this introduction. But to really appreciate this further, you need to see worked examples. And I will be doing worked examples on these one-tailed test hypothesis tests. Okay, so I'd encourage you to have a look at those.